A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it out before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read with us the Psalms 10 through 19. All of your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power that the peoples may know your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds those, those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. G Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not be enough to buy bread for all these people. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among all, so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, there were 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea beca became rough because of a strong wind was blowing, and when they rowed about Three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they waited, wanted him to come into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, I personally ask, and I ask on behalf of all of us here, that your Holy Spirit open our hearts to what you would have us to hear. Help us, Lord, always to be ready to answer 
your presence within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. It's good to see you again. There they are. The disciples were seated. And they were hungry. There was no food. And they yelled at themselves, what do we do now? This man, Jesus, who was with them, he heard their pleas. And he asked, does anybody have a morsel of food? If so, Please give me what you have. And there was a young boy who had five barley loaves and two fish. The disciples looked at one another in the crowd and they said, that ain't going to work. The young man, Jesus, said to him, give me what you have. And so he did. And they were fed by Jesus who used what was there to feed them as well as 5,000 more people. You never know. They looked at Jesus. Wow, how cool. Look at what you did. I'll tell you what, may we make you king, and then all our problems forever will be solved, and we will be fixed, never have to worry again. How about it, Jesus? And then the gospel writer of John, John, tells us this. It's wonderful. Listen to it. When Jesus realized that they wanted to make him king by force, what did he do? He ran away and hid himself in the mountains again to be alone. He ran away. When you see that response of Jesus, It confronts, I think, big time, what you and I together call power. For most of us, power is all about control. Fix it, fix it now, right the wrong, do it now, chastise those who need to be punished, turn our often deserts into plush gardens, turn my anger into laughter, make me a success because I need it, may I never be lost again. Folks, I'll be honest with you, when I do that, which I don't do anymore, but when I hear others doing it, it oftentimes sounds like we are trying to tell God what we want God to do. Power, control, ability to change outcomes, and do it just because. Make everything right. Feed the 5,000. Muscle. Control, force, get it done, power. So we need a king who will do what we want, to which Jesus responds by running away. No way, Jose. Maybe, just maybe, the power that Jesus relied upon and brought to our reality was not what we have come to expect. Maybe, just maybe, power for God, who took on human flesh in the person of Jesus for a real purpose called relationship, was not about making sure no one ever had a dark time in their life. To bring this home, let me say this. For many people, and maybe you are one, We like to believe that God is about this kind of power, that God is in control of everything. And if you believe that, then I ask what your response is to the COVID. Oh, my God, let me tell you what needs to be fixed. Let me tell you what I need, because I know you will do what I ask. Power, control, might, and muscle. I know this goes against what some of you believe, but I think we need to reflect on this. I want to share with you, as part of this, a a personal story about my experience with this issue of God's power. I was a hospital chaplain in Orlando Regional Medical Center for three years, uh, and it was a critical care 
uh, unit for five counties around Orlando. And I was there every weekend, Saturdays, for um, prayer, and during other parts of the week, for prayer and for pastoral care of people that were there. I learned some astounding insights into this issue of what is it, does it mean for God to have power. And I'll be brief, which is unusual for me. <laughs> I hear you all laughing. I <laughs> for three years, I saw the worst that can happen to human beings, even the nicest and most caring people. I saw people I knew knew Jesus because I knew them. And I knew people who lived out the relationship through prayer that they had with him because they were in deep relationship. But now they were tortured by life's power over us. Good, wonderful people suffering and some dying. Bad things happening to good people. It's a reality, folks. you got to come to grips with it. It was a life-changing spiritual transformation for me because God became a presence rather than a power, a relationship rather than a king. I had, as I suspect most of us do, the view towards God that if I pray and do the, do the correct and right things, I will be okay because God will keep the bad things from happening saying the psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because I know I can pray to you, O oh my God, and you will fix it. You are king, and you have the power. I came to see over time, folks, and over time and experience, clearly, 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 and it was not easy, that God is not the kind of king I sought a relationship with so that I could be safe because there is folks no guarantee never was never will be I had to preach an Easter sermon to a congregation 800 people and had a very difficult time doing it because I now saw the reality of the presence of God as no longer one of power I now saw clearly why Jesus ran away from those who sought him to be king. Because Jesus was God's presence in the midst of humanity. And the Holy Spirit is, Jesus, is God's presence in your soul. Bad things do and will happen to good people. That's a reality that we all have to live with. And there's not a thing you can do or say that's going to change that. So here it is. Maybe your personal relationship or our personal relationship with God is really not, oh God, use your power to make everything right and fix what is wrong in my life because you are the king. That's the power Jesus ran away from. It's the power that the disciples ran towards him for. So, question to ponder. What happens when you pray for something and you say, God, fix it, and it doesn't get fixed. Or it even gets worse. That's, that's what I had to come to grips with. Changed my relationship with God in a way I now can tell you about. So let me offer you something here. Could not God's power be about relationship? About presence? about God's presence with you, no matter how dark your life might get. Bad things can and will happen to you, trust me. But you will never, ever be alone. You may be lost, but you are never alone. You may be in darkness at parts of your life, but you are never alone in that darkness. I give thanks to God every morning when I say a prayer about my newly married daughter and her husband that God, that I know, thank you God for walking with them when they will have dark times in their lives because I know God will. And I've moved away from saying God never make it happen. 
Maybe the power of God that Jesus revealed is about continued presence, abiding relationship, walk God walking with you, and about forgiveness. When we ask forgiveness for our goof-ups, errors we make with those we love, and then we hear God say, yeah, you did boo-boo, but I'm still with you, now and always. My presence is about, my power is about presence, continued presence, abiding presence. Forgiveness, folks, is not about God power being used to punish you. It's about grace. God's power is about grace, the grace, the love of God that has no limits. Fix my evil doing, O oh God, you have the power. Make a wrong a right, and all will be well is the prayer that we make. But then you hear God say, no, folk, no, my friend, you have to fix it. But no, always, and no matter what you did, I am with you and always will be. How cool is that? Power is about presence, personal connect. I will walk with you as you go forward through bad times. I am with you. There are and will be hurts in life. And yes, please pray to God because prayer is about connect, not control. Prayer is about a conversation between two friends who know each other, not about God fix it for me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because you are present with me always. I'll close with this. It comes from the epistle this morning. Listen to it. Pray, uh, Paul is uh, saying a prayer, basically, for the congregation, one of the early congregations that he was in charge of. And he says this. I pray to God that God will strengthen your inner being with power, presence, through the Holy Spirit, presence. Read, yes, God's presence in your soul. God's presence is with you, no matter how dark things may get, which you know they can and will. That Christ will dwell in your hearts through faith. And faith is about abiding presence. It's about relationship. And you, as Paul ends it, he said that you will be rooted and grounded in love. In other words, hear God say to you in the depth of your soul, no matter how hungry you may be because of what's going on around you, I will be with you no matter what. Prayers about connect. Prayers about presence. Prayers about relationship. Prayer, prayer is about, begins with a G, let me hear it, grace. And grace, my friends, grace, my friends, is God's abiding presence. Grace, my friends, I have come to see, and I hope you will, will too, if you haven't already, that grace is God's presence, God's power all about grace and that's what will make a huge difference in your life in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen let us stand and say together the night
God of abundance, you open your hand and feed us in due season, satisfying the desires of every living thing. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for the families of nations, the families in our community and in our own families, that they may have all they need to live in peace and harmony. We pray especially for our President Joseph and our Governor Ron and those in the military, Miguel, Charles, Travis, Mike, and Matt. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for all churches and denominations that we may find ways of cooperating to care for the earth and to care for those in need while giving you the glory in all we do. We pray especially for Carla, Ev, Richard, and Lisa, and for Michael and Dabney. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Holy Innocents Valrico, Holy Trinity Clearwater, Iona Hope, Fort Myers, Lamb of God, Fort Myers, and for our Episcopal College chaplaincies at Florida Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers and State College of Florida in Bradenton, and for Resurrection Episcopal in Largo. And in our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. God, you are near to all who call out to you. Use us as you used the boy with two fish and five barley loaves to answer the cries of the hungry. We pray for our outreach ministries, Crafters for Hope, Sure, St. Wilfred's Food Pantry, and Ashton Elementary. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for the victims of war and violence, for the orphans, mothers, and men who live on the streets, and for all those who are seen as the fragments of society. May they be gathered up so that no one is lost. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for the sick and those facing the end of their days. May Christ dwell in their hearts through faith, and may they know that they are rooted and grounded in love. We pray especially for Anne, Jackie, Jan, Kimberly, Karen, Natasha, Myra, Zeke, Elizabeth, Al, Carol, Dick, Sarome, Shirley, Travis, Pam, Ed and Edie, Bobby, Gary, Heather, and Stuart. And for Jean, Claudia, Chris, Jamie, Crystal, and Melanie. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. When we would make you a king, forgive us. When we are caught up in the storms of life, come to us, calm our fears, and help us reach our destination. Now, through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the love of Christ, to you be the glory in the church for all generations. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with our growing in the spirit prayer. Almighty and living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our congregation. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right and grant us the courage to, to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in the eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> so let's try it. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am the Reverend Deacon Lisa Parker, um, and um, I want to you all to please extend a warm welcome and thank you to Rev Ev for sharing his yeah. wisdom with us for the last two weeks <laughs> while she is away. Carla will be back next week. Um, I don't have very many announcements, but last week I did announce that um, Gil Forler had died last Sunday. His funeral will be this Saturday, the, 20, the 31st at 11 o'clock here um, at St. Margaret. So I encourage you all to please be present to send him off. Um, Gil and was a, a regular troop of hers. Just yes. Years. He was part of our original A team, our adult acolyte team. And, and, <laughs> um, and he was also a very gifted photographer. If you happen to be at coffee hour, there's a stack of his photographs in the, um, in the um, cafe. F please feel free to um, take a peek at them. Um, you'll see so many familiar faces in those photographs. Um, and I have nothing more at this point. Well, I just want to say that as, as uh, Lisa said, this is my
made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
it together. Let's do it. In the name of this congregation, we send you out. Go now, rooted and grounded in love, to make known to all people the mighty deeds of God. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God.